I forgot to restart it. Evening and morning, number seven to six from the LSB.
name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Heavenly Father has made us, redeem us by His Son, and call us to faith by His Spirit, that we might be His children. As members of the family, God has asked us to work in the family vineyard and to live as befit a family member. Yet, as we look at, at our hearts, we must confess we have not always been faithful to our Father. Gracious Father, let us confess our sins <coughs> to God our Father. You have asked me to work and obey, but my behavior, I have grieved your heart and brought dishonor to you and to our family, the church. I have often failed even when I gave you my words of cooperation and commitment. Forgive me for the sake of your perfect obedient Son, Jesus Christ, enable me by your Spirit to be more like Jesus each day that by the example of his humility, I might also say yes to your commands with my words and my deeds. Dear friends in Christ, God's love is greater than any child could imagine. This love extends to you in spite of any weaknesses or past rebellion. This love was made known for you and for all who sorrow over the, their sin at the cross. As a call and ordained servant of the world, speaking in the name and by the command of my obedient son, Jesus Christ, who suffered and died for us all, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 God. The Lord be with you. Amen. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, preserve us from all harm and danger, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you what you want done. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us be done. The Old Testament reading is from Job 38, 4 through 18. God questions Job. The Lord said to Job, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you understand, uh, have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On the basis sunk, or the laid the cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut the sea doors, the sea with doors? When it burst from the wound, when it clouds its garment, thick darkness and a swaddling band? and for, uh, prescribed limits for it, and the set of bars and doors. And he said, Thus far, uh, uh, thus far shall you come no farther, and shall, uh, here shall you uh, prove waves uh, be stay. Have you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place? And if it takes, uh, and it might take hold of the skirts of the earth, and and the wicked be shaken out of it, it's a uh, change like clay under the seal, and it, and its feature stand out like a garment. The wicked, their lights is uh, withheld, and their uplift arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have you? Have the gates of the depth have been revealed to you, or, or have you seen gates be deep in darkness? Have you comprehend, uh, comprehend the ex expanse of the earth? Declare if you know that all this. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Bible reading is from Romans 10, 5 through 17. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Moses writes about the righteousness and the, uh, that base on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on its faith says, do not, uh, do not say in your heart who uh, will ascend to heaven. That is, bring a Christ down, or who descended into the uh, abyss. That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But uh, what, uh, what, but what does it say? The uh, word is near you, uh, in your mouth and in your heart. This is the word of the faith that proclaim because of the confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will uh, be saved for the heart who uh, one believes and justified and with the mouth who with uh, with the mouth one com uh, com confesses and is saved for the scripture says er everyone who believes in him <coughs> will not be uh, put to shame for there is no distraction between Jew and Greek the same Lord uh, same Lord, uh, Lord is Lord of all bestowing the riches on all who call on him for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved but how are you uh, to be called on, uh, on him and whom they uh, have not believed and now and how are they to believe in him, of, of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without uh, someone preaching? And how are they to pre preach, uh, preach less than they sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the field of those who preach the good news. But they are not all obey the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord has believed uh, what ha has heard from us. So the faith comes from bearing, from hearing, and hearing this is the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Christian faith speaking 
the Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, was buried, and descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the ceremony. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Christian believers, Peter originally called Simon, 
was one of Jesus' twelve apostles. He was a fisherman by trade, who was called, chosen by Christ himself, to a group that would follow him. He was noted several times for saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Our Gospel reading for today tell us that he got out of the boat to walk on the water and quickly began to sink because of his limitations in trusting Christ would uphold him. We see the arrogance of Peter who means well, who had passion and loyalty for Jesus but did not understand his own limitations. He is an example of who you and I are at times throughout our Christian life. <clears throat> I wish I wish I could say that I am not like Peter. Trusting one moment and then fearful and doubting the next. I wish I could say I am always a strong and steadfast in my faith all the time. But I know it is not true. I am like Peter. One moment trusting, the next moment not. At once sure and then doubting. Up and down. When challenges arise, difficulties, trials, temptations, Sometimes my faith is strong and confident knowing the Lord is with me and is greater than whatever problem I am facing. And yet at another times my faith is weak. <clears throat> and I doubt and wonder how this will ever work out. That I am sinking in the water in a terrible storm. Perhaps you too. And so friends, this is a great and comforting story for people like you and me. Not because it shows us how much we are like Peter and Peter like us. But because it shows us Jesus. The one who saved us. That it is not the strength of our faith that makes the difference, but the strength of our Savior that makes the difference. And that while we are often little faiths, it is true, He's always most faithful in His promises to us. And so it was the day on the sea. The wind was against the boat, making the going difficult. But they were a long way from the land. So they were making progress. They were fishermen. And they knew how to handle a storm. They knew how to navigate these waters and were not easily frightened. So while the storm was significant, difficult and bothersome, they were not in danger. In fact, what frightened them was not the storm, but when they saw Jesus, when they thought it was a ghost. But Jesus calmed their hearts and told them, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat and came to Jesus. It was probably only a, a very short walk. Only a few steps. He ventured to walk upon the water for a while. He probably took no more than a few uncertain and steady steps before his fear got the best of him. He began panicking and cried out in terror, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus knows. 
just as immediately he spoke to the disciples and calmed their fears when they cried out, thinking he was a ghost. So Jesus immediately grabs hold of Peter and saves him. And Jesus says to him, O oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? Jesus does not say, I am so proud of you for trying. Or if you could just learn to trust a little more. Was Jesus criticizing Peter? Was it a rebuke? Or was it more like the loving question of a father or mother to their child in the middle of the night? who cries out from a nightmare. Why are you so scared? We are here. Nothing is going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the way of it with Jesus. He's here to save us. He's not a ghost. He's a flesh and blood savior who is here to save and has in fact already saved us from our worst enemies, enemies which are worse than you or I can imagine, the sin that is destroying us, the death which will claim our life, and the devil who wants us for eternity. If you knew the dangers of those enemies, I think you would tremble in fear more than you do. You would avoid sin more than you do. You would cry out with Peter, Lord, save me, more than you do. And when we, and when we do not cry out to Jesus for help, it's not a sign of our strength, but of our ignorance and delusion. Peter at least cried out. And when we cry out to Jesus, what does he think of that? It is exactly what Jesus wants. For this is what Jesus has come to do, to save. When you fall into sin, Jesus wants you to cry out to him. Lord, save me, forgive me. When you are facing disease or death, Jesus wants you to cry out to him. Lord, save me. Raise me with you. When you are tempted and under the assaults of the devil, Jesus wants you to cry out to him. Lord, save me. Strengthen my faith. Yes, these are not bothersome to him. <coughs> not at all. Think of all the stories in the scriptures where people are crying out to Jesus for help. But disciples often do not want to be bothered. They often think as we think that these cries for help are bothersome to Jesus. But no, it is not that way at all. Jesus rebukes the disciples for thinking that way and then he stops and helps. Just as he reached out to a sinking Peter. He reaches out his divine hand to the lepers, the blind, the deaf, the lame, the dead. Jesus grabs them and gives them life. It is his joy, his, his passion, why he came. Yes, for there was, in fact, only one time when the prayer was not answered. When God withheld his hand and did not save. And that was when Jesus was on the cross. He was not rescued from sin, but had our sin laid upon him. He was not spared death, but died our death. He was not protected from, from the devil, but took all that the devil threw at him. And all the curse of our sin and all that the justice of God demanded for our sin. Jesus took it all. There was no hand to save. But then, then 
three days later, the Holy Spirit pulled Jesus from death in the grave, not to save him from these things, but because Jesus sacrificed for us, conquered all these things. He has stripped them of their power so that they can no longer torment us, his children, you and me. And it is not God who did that. You have a flesh and blood Savior whose flesh and blood saves you from your sin and whose divine hand will, on the last day, pull you, flesh and blood, out of the grave to live with him forever. But not only on the last day, our Lord's hand is at work in your life, even now. His hand that baptized you, pulling you from your sin, giving you his life, giving his spirit, and making you his child. His hands that feeds you, giving you a little faith, his very body and blood, to join you to him and him to you, to forgive your sin and strengthen your faith. And his hand working through those he has gathered around you to care for you. His hand working through doctors to heal you, through parents to care for you, through friends and neighbors to support you, through farmers to feed you, through the government and military to protect you, and how many others. Whether you realize it or not, in all these ways, it is our Lord caring for you. His hand reaching out to you and providing for you in every bodily and spiritual need. Difference in Christ, that does not mean you will not have troubles. You most certainly will. Like the disciples in the sea, in the boat, those that storm hitting at them, we will have our own storms in life. Sometimes it is because you get yourself into messes. Like Peter, sometimes it will be the sin in the world falling down on you. Sometimes this may even come from your loving father, Yes, from your loving Father who sent them to teach you and call you back to Him in repentance and faith. But it is exactly for this reason that our Lord has given you His name. That as the second commandment teaches us, you should not misuse His name, but use Him correctly. Use it correctly, rightly. He wants you to call upon Him in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. For this is good and pleasing to Him. For as the Apostle Paul reminds us today, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. <coughs> Do you realize how comforting that statement is? <coughs> Whether you are a Jew or a Gentile, Slave or free, young or old, of little faith or great faith, near or far, faithful or struggling with sin, fearful or confident, even if, that, like Peter, you can take only a few uncertain and steady steps. Wherever you find yourself and whoever you are, Jesus is faithful to all his promises. And the reason he came is the same reason he comes still today to say. For we, like Peter, on our own can only sing. We cannot save ourselves. And so, in Jesus, the God of Job, the creator of all, has come to you. He's mighty, yes, setting limits for the darkness and light. For, our, for the waters and land, for the sun and the stars, 
But always remember, He is mighty for you, not against you. And if there are times, like with Job, when He seems against you, it is only so that He may be for you, to teach you to pray, to teach you to call to Him, to teach you to rely on Him, to be your Savior. That we all may be brought to a greater faith, and a greater knowledge of who Jesus is, and confess at all times and in all places with the twelve apostles that day that truly Jesus is the Son of God who saves us and forgives us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue collecting the offering and we send the hymns 722. The injured, the persecuted, 
and for those near death, especially we remember Susan, Dorothy, Jean and Anna, Francis, Anne and Mike, Rainer and Marianne, Mary, Ritva, Marcus and Risto, the Seti family, Barbara, Geraldine, March, Pastor Gerald and his wife Doreen, for Pastor Ron and members of faith in London who are dealing with health problems and need healing. We pray also for those we name in our hearts and minds. That their hearts would not waver from Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all the families of our congregations, especially here at Grace, we pray for Rainer and Marianne, for Ritva, Risto, and Marcus, for Jean and Anna, and for Anna, that our Lord protects them and keeps them united by His love. Also, we pray for Rainer and Sarah, who are celebrating their birthdays this week, that our Lord keeps and sustains them every day of their life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our congregations, that we be given grace to believe that through Christ we belong to one another, and so be done with all falsehood and malice, instead speaking Christ's truth to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For those nations who are going through wars and social unrest, we remember Ukraine, Russia, Syria, Libya, Yemen, Palestine, Israel, Niger, and other nations of Africa. That our Lord remove the causes of hate and lead the leaders to the path of reconciliation and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Praise the Lord, give ear to the prayers of your people, and lead us to trust in your mercy without fear, that we may be confident that you will grant to us all things needful to us and our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Of closing him, I know my faith. Is
Can you yourself go out and serve the Lord? But after the coffee, okay? <laughs> Take care of yourself. Bro. Have a good day. God bless you. Remember, we have coffee. Let's go six, sir.